So now we're um, we've finished machining all the blocks for our for our reed press. There's one there. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that there's certain stages that we need to go through uh, to finish the die itself. The first is obviously the milling operation that gets the the blocks um, into the shape we want. Uh, then uh, I used uh, the grinder to make the ends all nice and square. And then the third phase, the final stage, is the lapping phase. Now this takes a long time to do. Um, and it's basically a cast iron table. There's another cast iron block here. And onto that we put um, lapping paste. It's like a, like a big dark toothpaste. Um, and we squirt that on. Uh, I use a little bit of the old WD-40 on here. And we move the blocks around the plate, obviously so that we don't make a big wear mark in the middle. This plate has got a lot of machined slots in it uh, where the paste falls into. And as we move the, uh, the block around, the, uh, the suction brings the um, paste to the top. And we just keep in a circular motion. Some people say you should do a figure of eight, which we can do. And we're just leveling the high spots off of the faces. This is possibly a job that's not done too often on some production tooling. But uh, on one-offs, if you're a tool maker, um, you have to do this if you're making some very precise tools, which is what we're doing. Obviously, to make a very precise reed we have to make an even preciser tool so uh, that's what we're doing and um, it sort of starts to stick onto the plate you can see when it gets very um, very flat it's because it starts to stick uh, this plate here um, is for the sides if you want to get them uh, very very uh, true um, to to the base so um, each block's going to take about 15 20 minutes each one we're going to redo this again after we've heat treated all the blocks but uh, for now we're going to do a bit of a soft a soft tool before we're going to put it together before we harden it um, so I'm going to carry on with this and in the meantime I'm going to tell you a little bit about reeds spend a few minutes talking about the history of reed making. Um, if you want to find out um, about the history of um, machine tools and the harmonica industry, I did write a small book that you can download for free off my website. So if you come to John Cook Harmonicas, there's a little book on there called The, the Julius Berthold Story. So um, you can read up about that one. But I'm just going to quickly run through briefly um, the three stages of, of making a reed. Um, and this goes back the first let's talk about the first stage um, and this is really the, the the really beginnings of harmonica making this is sort of about from 1830 to about 1850 so we're talking a long long time ago um, and what they did the reason where, where I got this information from is that there was um, a book written in about 18, 1880 and in that it describes um, how reeds were made by interviewing Julius Berthold and he went through it, he lived through the, that period and he quite uh, it got in quite a lot of detail documented down how reeds were made um, before his time really. So the first way um, that reeds were made is that he used to put a, a sheet of brass. Um, nowadays brass is rolled um, on a rolling mill but rolling mills never really uh, were around in 1830, not I'm aware of, um, and they were hammered flat. They were hammered flat, so you might see some reeds um, on harmonicas called hammered reeds. It doesn't mean that they've been hammered out. It means that the sheet uh, was hammered, um, and that was really the first way of, of coming from an ingot um, in the sort of the 1800s into sheet. Is they used a, a water mill and a big hammer, and they would pound sheets out. And then the harmonica makers at the time, we're talking about 1830, would get their replate that they would file the slot out. They would get the brass, they would put it over the reed slot, and they would get a scriber 
and they would scribe out uh, the outline of the reed and then they would get some snips and they would cut the reed out by hand. Um, very, very laborious, um, an awful job. They're all done by candlelight, there was no electricity in those days. Um, and that was really the first phase of, of harmonica manufacture. There's not too many uh, harps that exist with hand cut reeds. Um, I haven't seen any to be honest, but uh, the next phase I have seen. The next uh, leap forward was probably from about 1850 to about 1880. And that was the invention of the individual reed press. This is one here that I made. You can see it there, that's the shape of the reed on the lower die. That's the shape of the reed on the upper die. Um, and when they come together, they punch out through the bottom. Uh, the reed, put the plate in, close the two. It says in the old doc, the old um, the documentation that they used a screw press for that. Closest I've got to it, I I've owned a screw press. This is probably from the same sort of period, uh, but this was probably for the textile industry. But it was pretty prolific um, as a press around 1850, and it's got a screw here sort of the um, the beginnings of the of the fly press so that's stage two that's where they punched out individual reeds with um, a single die and the reed come out now that went took us up to about 1879 when Julius Berthold had a eureka moment and invented the reed stamping machine now this took making reeds from a hundred reeds an hour to making a hundred thousand an hour. Um, if anyone who's plotted the history of harmonicas would see a massive um, growth around about 1880 to um, about 1920. Um, when I say massive, I mean millions and millions more than they ever did. And it was due to uh, Berthold's reed machine. And he invented a sequential die I'm going to show you how that uh, how that works. Uh, it's the it's the tool that we're building actually, so um, we are going to replicate that tool. Um, so this is how it works. <laughs> 